So let us start with the concept of multiplexing. Multiplexing, sometimes contracted to muxing, is a method by which multiple analog message signals or data digital streams are combined into one signal over a shared medium. It is popular networking technique that integrates multiple analog and digital signal into a signal transmitted over a shared medium. Multiplexers and demultiplexers are used to convert multiple signals into one signal. Multiplexing is done by equipment called multiplexer, MUX. It is placed at the transmitting end of the communication link. At the receiving end, the composite signal is separated by equipment called demultiplexer, DMUX. Demultiplexer performs the reverse process of multiplexing and routes the separated signal to their corresponding receivers or destinations. For better understanding the concept of multiplexing, now we will understand its need. First, to make it possible for any network device to talk to any other network device without having to dedicate a connection for each pair. This requires share media. Second, to make a scarce or expensive resource stretch further, for example, to send many signals down each cable or fiber strand running between major metropolitan areas or across one satellite uplink. Now let us talk about some multiplexing techniques. First is frequency division multiplexing. Second is wavelength division multiplexing. Third, time division multiplexing. Fourth, statistical time division multiplexing. Fifth, code division multiplexing. Now let us start with frequency division multiplexing, FDM. Frequency division multiplexing works by transmitting all of the signals along the same high speed link simultaneously with each signal set at a different frequency. For FDM to work properly, frequency overlap must be avoided. Therefore, the link must have sufficient bandwidth to be able to carry the wide range for frequencies required. The demultiplexer at the receiving end works for dividing the signal by tuning into the appropriate frequency. FDM operates in a similar way to radio broadcasting where a number of different stations will broadcast simultaneously but on different frequencies. Listeners can then tune their radio so that it captures the frequency or stations they want. FDM gives a total bandwidth greater than the combined bandwidth of the signal to be transmitted. In order to prevent signal overlap, there are strips of frequency that separates the signals. These are called guard bands. In FDM, signals to be transmitted must be analog signal. Thus, digital signals need to be converted to analog form if they are to use FDM. Now, this was brief about FDM. Now, let us discuss the advantages and disadvantages of FDM. Here comes the advantages first. The first advantage is a large number of signal can be transmitted simultaneously. Second, FDM does not need synchronization between its transmitter and receiver for proper operation. Third, demodulation of FDM is easy. Fourth, due to slow narrow band fading, only a signal channel gets affected. Now here comes disadvantages. First disadvantage is, the communication channel must have a very large bandwidth. Second, intermodulation distortion takes place. Third, large number of modulators and filters are required. Fourth, FDM suffers from the problem of crosstalk. Fifth, all the FDM channels get affected due to wide band fading. Now let us learn the application of FDM for better understanding. FDM is used for FM and AM radio broadcasting. Each AM and FM radio station uses a different carrier frequency. In AM broadcasting, these frequencies use a special band from 530 to 1700 kHz. All these signals or frequencies are multiplexed and are transmitted in air. A receiver receives all these signals but tunes only one which is required. Similarly, FM broadcasting uses a bandwidth of 88 to 108 MHz. FTM is used in television broadcasting and first generation cellular telephones also uses FDM.
Next is time division multiplexing, TDM. The TDM is the digital multiplexing technique. In this technique, the channel or line is not divided on the basis of frequency but on the basis of time. Total time available in the channel is divided between several users. Each user is allotted with a particular time interval called time slot or time slice during which the data is transmitted by that user. Thus, each sending device takes control of entire bandwidth of the channel for a fixed amount of time. The data rate capacity of the transmission medium should be greater than the data rate required by sending or receiving devices. In this system, all the signals to be transmitted are not transmitted simultaneously. Instead, they are transmitted one by one. Thus, each signal will be transmitted for a very short time. One cycle or frame is set to be completed when all the signals are transmitted once on the transmission channel. This system can be used to multiplex analog or digital signals. However, it is more suitable for the digital signal multiplexing. There are two types of TDM. First is synchronous TDM and second is asynchronous TDM. First, we will learn things about synchronous TDM. STDM. In synchronous TDM, each device is given same time slot to transmit the data over the link, irrespective of the fact that the device has any data to transmit or not. Hence the name synchronous TDM. Synchronous TDM requires that the total speed of various input lines should not exceed the capacity of path. Each device places its data onto the link when its time slot arrives. That is, each device is given the possession of line turn by turn. If any device does not have data to send, then its time slot remains empty. The various time slots are organized into frames and each frame consists of one or more time slots dedicated to each sending device. If there are n sending devices, there will be n slots in frame, that is one slot for each device. There are disadvantages of these techniques which are listed as follows. First one is, the channel capacity cannot be fully utilized. Some of the slots go empty in certain frames. Only first two frames are completely filled. The last three frames have six empty slots. It means out of 20 slots in all, six slots are empty. This wastes the one-fourth capacity of the links. Second, the capacity of single communication line that is used to carry the various transmission should be greater than the total speed of input lines. This was all about synchronous TDM. Now next comes asynchronous TDM. It is also known as statistical time division multiplexing. Asynchronous TDM is also called so because in this type of multiplexing, time slots are not fixed, that is, the slots are flexible. Here the total speed of input lines can be greater than the capacity of the path. In synchronous TDM, if we have n input lines, then there are n slots in one frame. But in asynchronous, it is not so. If we have n input lines, then the frame contains not more than m slots. With m less than n, the number of time slots in a frame is based on a statistical analysis of number of input lines. Third is statistical time division multiplexing, STDM. Statistical time division multiplexing is a variant of time division multiplexing. It is a type of communication link sharing very similar to dynamic bandwidth allocation. In statistical multiplexing, a communication channel is divided into an arbitrary number of variable bitrate digital channels or data streams. The link sharing is adapted to the instantaneous traffic demands of the data streams that are transferred over each channel. In TDM, digital signals from a number of users are transported over a single wideband facility by time slicing an available bandwidth of that facility. Simple TDM assumes a synchronous nature to the multiplexing. The time slices are all of equal sizes, typically a few bits, and then the user cycles through the time interval in a fixed cycle. This gives each user a constant bandwidth channel with a fixed delay characteristics, synchronous optical network, 
Sonnet and T carrier system are excellent examples of this kind of synchronous TDM system. It is important to note the importance of the time slots being the same size and the user cycling in a fixed pattern. This allows the demultiplexer at the egress end of the circuit to distinguish one user from another and correctly demultiplex their traffic. Each user is distinguished in time. One might call this a form of implicit addressing. As long as the demultiplexer can correctly locate the time slots in the incoming bit stream, it can distinguish two separate channels by the time at which they arrive. In statistical TDM, time slots are assigned to user on a first-come, first-served basis. User messages are queued in a pool of buffers and the buffers are empty into time slots and slots become available on the shared medium. Thus, any user can be assigned to any time slot at any time. Because time slots are not dedicated to a particular user, it is not possible for the demultiplexer to locate a particular user simply by when the bits arrive. Instead, each time slot must carry an explicit address that identifies the user of that time slot. This addressing is overhead and is necessary to identify the receivers. This was all about TDM. Now let us learn its advantages and disadvantages. First are advantages. First, full available channel bandwidth can be utilized for each channel. Second, intermodulation distortion is absent. TDM circuitry is not very complex. Third, the problem of crosstalk is not severe. Now here comes disadvantages of TDM. First, synchronization is essential for proper orientation. Second, due to slow narrowband fading, all the TDM channels may get wiped up. Fourth is orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, OFDM. OFDM is based on the utilization of different orthogonal frequencies subcarriers. The use of orthogonal subcarriers would allow the spectrum of the subcarriers to overlap, thus increasing the spectral efficiency. This overlapping should be done in a way that the maximum of the next carrier is placed just on top of the first null point of the previous carrier. When this happens, the two signals are orthogonal. In another way, if the dot product of two signals is equal to zero, these signals are said to be orthogonal to each other. That is, they are uncorrelated. As long as orthogonality is maintained, it is still possible to remove the individual subcarriers despite their overlapping spectrums. Now here comes OFDM improved spectrum efficiency. Let us understand the concept of OFDM improved spectrum efficiency. OFDM also allows a tight packing of narrow carriers into a bigger frequency band, reducing in this way the spectrum needed and thus increasing the spectrum efficiency. Next comes the concept of OFDM signal. Here the figure shows a typical OFDM signal. It is composed of multiple subcarriers. The distance between the center frequencies of the subcarrier is exactly the inverse of the symbol period TS. Bigger TS means subcarriers will allocate closer and more subcarriers could be allocated on a given spectrum bandwidth. An OFDM symbol is a combination of a NX subcarrier per symbol being produced in parallel at the same time. In this way, the data is sent across a set of N subcarriers. Each of them carry only part of the transmission. The total data rate is the sum of the individual data rates of each subcarrier. Now next topic is code division multiplexing. CDM may be defined as the form of multiplexing where the transmitter encodes the signal using a pseudo random sequence. CDM involves the original digital signal with a spreading code. The spreading has the effect of spreading the spectrum of the signal gently and reducing the power over any one part of the spectrum. On the other hand, the receiver knows about the code generated and transmitted by the transmitter and therefore can decode the received signal. Each different random sequence corresponds to a different combination channel from multiple stations. 
Code division multiplexing assigns each channel into own code to make them separate from each other. These unique underlying codes, which decoder restore the original desired signal while totally removing the effect of other coded channels. Guard spaces are realized by using codes with orthogonal codes. In Q of TDM and FDM, channels are isolated by separate time or frequency slots, which are occupied in common by all users. Wavelength Division Multiplexing Wavelength Division Multiplexing is similar to Frequency Division Multiplexing, but instead of taking place at radio frequencies, WDM is done in the IR portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Each IR channel carries several RF signals combined by means of FDM or time division multiplexing. Each multiplexed IR channel is separated or demultiplexed into the original signals at the destination. Using FDM or TDM in each IR channel in combination with WDM or several IR channels, data in different formats and at different speeds can be transmitted simultaneously on a single fiber. Wave division multiplexing is a method of combining multiple signals onto optical fiber. WDM works similarly to frequency division multiplexing that we may be more familiar with only rather than splitting sound or radio signals into different frequencies. WDM splits beams of light into various colors wavelength. An access wavelength division multiplexing the equipment responsible for combining signals together for transmission over the BTW core fiber optic backhaul. The WDM unit consists of single processing facility. The multiplexer, which is responsible for joining the signal at the transmitting end, and a demultiplexer, which is responsible for splitting the signals at the receiving end. Here I conclude this chapter. Hope you understand all the concepts clearly. Meet you in the next chapter. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.